hello everyone in this video we'll be discussing about the scientists those who have contributed in the research of photosynthesis so according to ncrt we have to discuss five important scientists so their name have been arranged in the order of the year in which they did their discovery so let's start with the first scientist who laid his views on the topic of photosynthesis and he was joseph prisley the first scientist now let's name those scientists in an order second scientist was jan ingenhaus third scientist julius von sach fourth scientist tw engelman and fifth scientist cornelius van neel so these are the five scientists first is joseph prisley second is jan ingenhaus third is julius von sach fourth one is tw engelman and fifth one is cornelius van neel so let us study what these scientists individually have contributed so let's start with the first scientist joseph prisley i'll be sharing you with a little mnemonic so that you could relate the name of scientist and their discovery together so from the name joseph prisley you need to remember priest priests are a part of church and in church they use candles for worshiping their gods so whenever you hear the name of scientist joseph prisley a candle should strike your mind So he did the famous candle bell jar experiment in the year 1770. Four years later, that is in year 1774, he discovered an important gas, and that was oxygen. So let us study what was his experiment on candle bell jar. So he did his experiment in two stages: the first stage and the second stage. In the first stage, he used a mouse, a living mouse, and a burning candle. and he place a can a bell jar over that this is called as bell jar and it he placed it over these two things he came after few hours and saw that the mouse died and the candle flame extinguished so he said these this living mouse and burning candle is removing something from the air which is leading to a stage where the animal could not survive more and similarly the candle flame then he added a plant to this experiment he added a plant again a living mouse and a burning candle he again came to the site of experiment after few hours and saw that the candle is still burning and the mouse is also alive so he said that these this plant has added something important to the air which this burning candle and living mouse is removing so he gave a statement that plant restore from air whatever breathing mouse breathing animal and in this experiment the animal used is mouse it is also a potential question and a burning candle remove from the air so let's study the two statements given by joseph prisley first of all he did the candle bell jar experiment year 197 1770 and in year 1774 he discovered oxygen gas Now coming to the second scientist whose name is Jan Ingenhaus. So from his name you need to remember engine. Yes, a car engine. And we all know that engine requires fuel oxygen for combustion of fuel. Therefore Jan Ingenhaus experiment was somehow centered to oxygen. He did his experiment on aquatic plants and he said that they will release oxygen only in the presence of sunlight so his first statement was that sunlight is essential for this process the process which we now know as photosynthesis and he also said that the green part is only the part of plant which is releasing oxygen so two important statements given by jan ingen haus were sunlight is essential for the process and the green part of the plant will release oxygen he lived from year 1730 to 1799 and now let me show you these diagrams so the first diagram is showing you a aquatic plant and these bubbles are actually oxygen gas being evolved during the process of photosynthesis now let's study his experiment so he used a beaker filled with water and he used an inverted funnel in that funnel he kept green plant and over this inverted funnel he in he up uh, put a test tube and now when this whole setup was placed in sunlight he could see gas bubbles coming out and when he did did the research he found that the 
these gas bubbles were actually oxygen gas now he placed that whole setup in a shady room there was no gas bubbles formed therefore he said that sunlight is very important for this process and the gas evolved is oxygen gas which comes from the green part of the plant because we now know as this green part is due to chlorophyll and chlorophyll is an important molecule for the process of photosynthesis so he was a second scientist two statements first is sunlight and second one is green part releasing oxygen now coming to the third scientist of our discussion the scientist is julius von sach from this his word, his name you need to remember sack yes a jute sack which is used to store items or goods so he he was wholly centered to the storage purposes he wanted to know what where this chemical which is doing photosynthesis is stored and also where is the product of photosynthesis stored therefore he gave the first statement that the green substance which we now call as chlorophyll is present in plants in special bodies which we now call as chloroplast so this was his first statement and the second statement he gave that glucose which is a product of photosynthesis is stored as starch in green plants so you can see he used this storage as his key features of research first he said that green substance is stored in special bodies understood and the second thing he said that this glucose is stored in plants as starch humans store glucose as glycogen all animals store glucose as glycogen plants store glucose as starch as simple as that so he gave these statements in the year 1854 now let me show you his experiment he used a simple experiment which we all have done in our classes that we will place a piece of paper over a leaf and place that plant in sunlight and after some time when we do a iodine test over that leaf we could find that the leaf will turn blue black except at the region which we covered with paper that signifies that this green part of the plant of the leaf which was exposed to sunlight was doing photosynthesis was preparing glucose and this glucose was converted into starch so this starch when combines with iodine will give blue black color as simple as that so this was this this was the experiment done by julius von sach in year 1854 now coming to our fourth scientist he is t w engelman so from his name you can either infer a tv that is television we all know that tv has multiple colors or you can you can make a mnemonic when so ever angel will come from heaven the sky would have many rainbows just for the sake of learning his experiment so let's come to his experiment he used a glass prism to split light into its spectrum as sir isaac newton also told us he was the first one to tell us that white light is composed of seven colors and we can separate these seven colors from white light using a glass prism so t w engelman used his advice and and what was the core purpose of his research he wanted to see in which color of light will the photosynthesis be done at the maximum speed he was concerned about this fact so he split the white light into a spectrum of seven colors that is vibgyor violet just sim similar to as a rainbow and he play he illuminated green algae by this light green algae just because green part of the plant was doing the photosynthesis he knew that part and green algae was named the name of the algae was cladophora he illuminated green algae named cladophora as simple as that and placed this algae in a suspension of aerobic bacteria the bacteria which uses oxygen for multiplication and their metabolism so see how intelligent he was he split the light he used green algae because he knew green part will only release oxygen and to test where oxygen is released in more quantity he used the bacteria which require oxygen for their multiplication so if oxygen is released in particular color of light in that 
particular region the number of bacteria multiplying would be more now let's see the his experiment through this diagram so here we can see that light is split by a glass prism into seven colors that is its spectrum and it is illuminating a green algae called uh, called as cladophora and this cladophora is placed on the slide containing aerobic bacteria and now when we see the spectrum we could see that the bacteria are more in the region of blue and red light this means photosynthesis is at maximum speed in blue and red light region so this was all about tw engelmann's experiment now coming to the last scientist of our discussion and he is cornelius van neel he lived from year 1897 to 1985 now let's let us understand what was his concern of investigation he wanted to know he was curious how plants are converting carbon dioxide into oxygen as many of us also know this but later on after completing his investigation he found out plants are not converting carbon dioxide into oxygen it is the water which is which the plant is absorbing from roots is converted into oxygen yes the oxygen released in photosynthesis comes from water not from carbon dioxide and how did he prove it so he used two colonies of bacteria one was a purple colored bacteria and the other one was green colored bacteria and he gave the most interesting statement and his statement stated that hydrogen from an ox suitable oxidizable compound any compound which can easily give give its hydrogen atom is called as oxidizable compound so here in this reaction of photosynthesis water will act as an oxidizable compound as it will easily give its hydrogen atom now who will receive this hydrogen atom carbon dioxide will receive hydrogen atom and would be reduced to carbohydrates and this carbohydrate in our reaction is none other than glucose so he said that the hydrogen from water that is a oxidizable compound would reduce this carbon dioxide into a carbohydrate which we know is glucose in our reaction and how did he prove it instead of water he used h2s that is hydrogen sulfide gas and he saw that instead of oxygen being released sulfur and sulfate was released so here when he replaced water with hydrogen sulfide he could see that instead of oxygen sulfur or sulfates were released therefore he could easily explain that this is not carbon dioxide which is converting into oxygen it is actually the water or say the oxidizable compound which is converting into oxygen so with this we have discussed the five scientists starting with joseph priestley and now coming back to the last scientist colinus van neel we came to know how these they contributed to the research of photosynthesis now i want to drag your attention to the balanced equation of photosynthesis i want you friends to just cram it learn it by heart and i'll make it easier for you so let's start the discussion we know that in a glucose molecule we have six carbon atom therefore we need six carbon and carbon will be provided by carbon dioxide therefore we need six molecule of carbon dioxide it is as simple now we should remember that plants are so generous they want they say that the amount of gas you would give us would be equal to the amount of gas we will release so if we give them six molecules of carbon dioxide they are so generous they would return six molecules of a gas called oxygen so we get six molecules of oxygen gas but in the process of photosynthesis the plant needs double the amount of water that is 12 molecules of water now you need to pay attention that the oxygen from this water molecule was radio actively labeled and was found to be released by the plant as oxygen gas therefore it was again proved that what oxygen 
is coming from the water now what will happen to the oxygen of this carbon dioxide molecule this would be released as water molecule as we could see that six water molecules are also released in a balanced equation and also friends you should know that the hydrogen atom of this water would be split into two places one place it would be sent to this glucose molecule and the other place it would be sent in this water molecule being produced and with this i hope you are you can easily recall that six carbon dioxide molecules will combine with double the amount of water molecules that is 12 mo water molecules to produce one molecule of glucose c6 h12 o6 plus six molecules each of water and the gas oxygen so with this we have completed the entire discussion of the scientist and the balance equation of photosynthesis hope you like this video do check my other contents also and i usually post these notes on my telegram channel do visit that channel also thank you for watching this till the end